Hello everybody, Smith here. Welcome back to some more Fighter Subscriber. And yes, it is about time. It's been uh, nearly a year and a half since uh, the first episode of Series 3. So, yeah. Anyway, um, preliminaries are still ongoing, but there's a handful of fighters I think it's safe to say have made it through to the next round to uh, to face these, my, uh, my current lineup of fighters. So, uh, let's go meet our first contender. This then is the CX-20B2 by Steek, uh, one of five craft to have so far gained a perfect score in the preliminaries, and a much more minimalistic and understated craft than the other four. Not just in the looks, but it has a, a single Saturn engine, just the one Gal-22, and uh, only four Sidewinders, although it has used them to, uh, to devastating effect up to this point. I took it up for the usual manual test flight, and that minimal loadout means this thing really can accelerate. It can pull some very tight turns as well, although I did notice a little bit of instability at, uh, at very high G. Uh, that clearly hasn't, uh, hasn't held it back so far, but will it have an effect today? Well, let's go and find out. The standard of craft I've received this year has just been phenomenal. My own craft really have their work cut out for them, and first to face the CX-20 will be my Red Hawk, my SU-47 inspired craft, and uh, this has had its fair share of uh, its own uh, stability issues over the uh, over the time I've been using it, but hopefully my newly uh, my newly tweaked and tuned version has managed to iron most, if not all, of those out. Let's um. Let's get this underway. Heartbleed mode will be on for these fights, but I'll, uh, I'll uh, switch that on later at a more opportune time. Let's, uh, let's get this started. The first fight, the first fight of the gauntlet round of Season 4 of Fighter Subscriber has started. Uh, now, I was about to say, I assume these are only set up to launch the, uh, the one sidewind of a target if they... Um, if they do have just the four, but no, all four have uh, been launched pretty much straight away. Adam Kerman breaking low to try and avoid the incoming missiles. Uh, yeah. I don't know what they're going to do from now on in. Uh, as I've, I've said a few times during the preliminaries, it seems though with this version of BD Armoury, I'm on 1.5.2. We're keeping the same version all the way through the competition. Um, the craft do seem to be... Uh, Launching more missiles than, oh my god, one of the CX-20s has gone already. Launching more missiles than they're set up for. This could go on for a while. Another burst of gunfire there did not find its mark. How are the Red Hawks getting on? Let's see uh, Let's see it from one of the Red Hawks' perspective. Just as gunfire goes in from one of the CX-20B2s, I don't think it came to anything, though. Oh my god, that is one of the Red Hawks. That is one of the Red Hawks. Quite badly wounded. Ion Kerman. Stripped of, uh, stripped of some pretty important parts there. It looks like the pendulum is swinging slowly back in favour of the CX-20B2s. Oh my god, it's a joust. Very nearly a hand-to-hand -hand kill. Ghosty Kerman though, yeah. It's 2v2, Ghosty Kerman just shredding the, uh, shredding what I assume is the, uh, the already falling Red Hawk. Still on the vessel switcher will still provide a bit of a distraction to uh, to the two CX twenty B two. Ghosty Kerman gets a bit of a scorching there. Comes around. Oh my god! And we are down to just the single CX twenty B two. Adam Kerman needs to get a very very quick kill here. Two v one is going to be a lot harder than um, yeah. The the Red Hawk damage Red Hawk has finally crashed. Yeah. 2v1 is going to be a little bit harder than 3v2. Something needs to happen quickly. Adam Kerman just picking parts off of the two Red Hawks. That looks like that was a perfect opportunity. One of the Red Hawks having some difficulties there. Which one is that? Oh my god, not that one, clearly. Josh Kerman in a bit of a flat spin. I said about stability issues. Yeah, these things. Ah. I've never seen. I haven't seen them done that for a while. Um, CX twenty B two. It's effectively a one on one now. Adam Kerman just needs to kind of shake the Red Hawk on his tail, although it is currently doing very well. It's sticking to him like glue, and uh, surely soon will open up with those twin Vulcan cannons. No, Adam Kerman does manage to avoid the rest of it. Might be able to swing round very quickly. Line up his guns. Here we go. It's a joust. Very, very nearly. Oh no! Adam Kerman has decided he's going to uh, finish off that other Red Hawk as uh, Dogfight Cam very handily decides to switch to <laughs> looking at the wrong Red Hawk. 
Ah, oh, this is why I don't use it that often, but now it is just down to the straight one-on-one. -on -one. It's a, some pretty heavy hits. Some pretty heavy hits, and the Red Hawk, it looks like, has run out of fuel. Missing some control surfaces. I don't have battle damage on. We're not using battle damage for this season. So, unless GT Kerman can line up his guns in the glide, which he's trying to do, it looks like this is going to be... And it is! A very, very, very close victory for Steak CX-20B2s. Oh, how long has this dogfight been going on for? Ah, the, the, the time has gone missing now that the fight has stopped. Eh. Yeah, not the most convincing of victories, and I do consider the Red Hawk to be my weakest of craft, so despite the very impressive performance in the preliminaries, Steak's craft might be in a little bit of trouble. We'll have to see. Let's um let's move on to uh, to the next one of my fighters. So a long and drawn out but ultimately fruitful first fight for this CX twenty B two, but this this will be interesting because now it goes up against my own sort of light and nimble fighter, the uh, the spike tail. Let's um well, let's get them up into the air. So, single engine versus single engine. Uh, Heartbleed mode once again activated to try and to try and stop the fight dragging on too long. Yeah, a uh, fat lot of good that did last time. I think I, it was about seven and a half minutes that fight. About seven minutes, I think, that last fight. Normally these are over in about two to three. Okay, the missile's coming in. Like, that come. Oh, those are coming very close. Oh, one of the spike tails. One of the spike tails has taken a heavy hit by the looks of it. Uh, it might be one of those glancing blows. We will have to see. Yeah, it doesn't look like any of them have suffered any fatal damage. Ghosty Kerman. Ghosty Kerman now coming in. Let's switch to the uh, to the dogfight cam. Yeah, launching the Sidewinders, the uh, CX-20B2s. Ah, yeah, plenty of, uh, plenty of flares to avoid those. And, yeah, it seems to be, we've got a, a nice tight sort of 2v2 grouping here and another one uh, a little further over there uh, 1v1 yeah the missiles sidewinders going back and forth ghosty Kerman comes around again who are you targeting okay them nope them you're changing your mind ah oh, for god's sake ghosty okay couple of sidewinders at a uh, at a stray cx20 doesn't seem to have come to anything another one oh my god that is a sidewinder to the face. That is a perfect short-range sidewinder kill. Ghosty Kerman gets uh, gets a scorching from one of the CX-20Bs, but is now looking to get some revenge. Tries to line up guns. A little bit of instability there. That's what I was talking about. Goes for guns. For some reason, the dogfight cam really didn't like that. Um, it is down. It is three on one. It is now three on one. Steak Kerman is in a little bit of trouble. It's It's... <laughs> <laughs> he goes through a pair of jousts before um, picking a different target and then picking a different target. Three three spike tails on his tail. I so should have called them something different. Comes over the top. The spike tails having a little bit of difficulty lining up guns. This is a maneuverable craft. Here comes the gunfire now. Comes over the top again. Those are uh, those twin Vulcans. My preferred twin Vulcans on all my craft opening up there. Bit of a smattering, of course, as I said, Heartbleed Mode means that uh, as the longer, the longer the fight goes on, the less hit points those parts will have. Get stripped of some parts, can still just about hold it together. Oh no. No, it's not looking good. A bit of a sitting duck. Okay, that's probably balanced him up. But, um, <laughs> no your stability. No control surfaces, it's all now just <laughs> in the engine gimbal. And yeah, I think, um, struggle as he might, I think this is only going to end one way for Steak Kerman. Steak's patron Kerbal in his own craft. Sadly, it is not a fairy tale ending, as the, uh, as the spike tails are victorious. So yeah, it seems that tweaking and tuning I did on my own craft uh, paid off. Anyway, the uh, the CX twenty B two has uh, has one opportunity left to maximise its points in its final fight. Yeah, something of a shock result there. After this craft's really strong performance in the preliminaries, I really wasn't expecting it to to lose any of its uh, any of its fights. At least, 
not that heavily, but uh, regardless, uh, the CX20B2 does have one final chance at uh, picking up some more points, and that is up against my Lynx F1. So let's um, let's get this one going. The final fight starts. I'm just starting to wonder if the um, that quirk with uh, this version of BD Armory, where they fire quite a lot more missiles than they're supposed to would um, would be having any, any effect but no I don't think so because uh, yeah the CX-20 would generally be releasing all of its missiles before it got into gun range anyway so I mean it wouldn't have them available for uh, switch on the dogfight cam we wouldn't have them available for uh, close quarters combat oh my god one of the lynxes has taken a heavy hit by the looks of things um, and is in to a flat spin and with the links, yeah, that unfortunately is is kind of a fatal thing. Those engine nacelles are spaced out too wide. Really to Oh my god, another one. This time this one's taken some serious damage, I think. The only healthy Lynx comes around trying to pick out. Really has some work on that, I think. The other, uh, I think the other uh, Lynx is actually distracting, distracting the other CX-20s. So if, oh, Steve Kerman, Steve Kerman, oh, there's a, that's slightly perverse there. Oh, and the, uh, the CX-20 seems to have actually given up on um, on chasing Steve Kerman's craft. So Steve manages to get some Sidewinders away, but then, then the CX-20s finally do take an interest in Steve Kerman's craft and it is very quickly all over. Despite their performance in the last round, these are still incredibly lethal craft and show them any weakness and that happens. Mm, let's um let's go look at the final scores. Definitely a mixed bag of results there for the CX20 B2. Uh, a good looking craft which absolutely minced everything in its preliminaries. Uh, and if we bring up what must be possibly the world's most useless leaderboard we can see that with six kills and four survivors the CX-20 B2 has a total of ten points. Will it be enough? I have no idea because it's the first craft to go. Time will tell. A huge thank you to Steek for this craft. Uh, if you want to get involved in Fighter Subscriber the preliminaries are still open but won't be for too much longer. There'll be more details in the description about that. But. Yes, that will be all for today. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, and you haven't already, then please consider liking, subscribing, uh, maybe following me on Twitter, possibly getting involved with the Discord. Great KSP and BD Army community on there, and more besides. Uh, all those links in the description, as are links to the PayPal and the Patreon. If you want to help support the channel, you too can get your own little patron kerbal, like I've been using here today, as well as your name, end of the videos, access to the patron only Discord, that kind of thing. I will be back soon with some more Fighter Subscriber, but until then, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.